All right, here we go. Good evening. Welcome to the Showtime TV. I'm your host, Omar Rashida. Uh, we have some very special guests this evening. Um, they have a very, very excellent uh, medical health practice. Um, I had her on before, and this is like, I think, third or fourth time she's coming on to be a special guest. We're going to be talking about Dell Care Health Solutions. And my special guest is um, Dr. Nadine Lindsay and Felicia. Good, late, good evening, ladies. How are you? Good evening. All right, representing so uh, representing healthcare solutions. So, so Dr. Lindsay, if you could just give a brief description of uh, the background of how uh, healthcare solutions at uh, Dell Care Solutions had uh, started. For those who who may not have heard of it, or maybe those who may have been driving by Lancaster Avenue saw that big sign and said, "You know, what is this here?" <laughs> Okay, um, thank you so much, Mr. Rashara. Um, again, I am Dr. Nadine Lindsay. I am a family nurse practitioner, um, um, managing partner of Delcare Health Solutions. I Delcare Health Solutions uh, gave birth a year and a half ago. Um, the need to establish to uh, act, to create access to care actually. Um, in um, the marginalized areas of Wilmington and its surroundings, um, just kind of present was presented, and so uh, we wanted to address um, the issues. So we chose this location um, here at twenty eight hundred one Lancaster Avenue. Um, you know, this was our opportunity to create that space where individuals who have longed for. Um, that provider that has that listening ear, that care about their health and well-being, um, that will go the extra mile for them. Um, so um, we 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 came here and we have been here since doing just that. All right. Now, Felicia, what, what is your role uh, with uh, Dell Care Solutions? I am the lead medical assistant here. So okay. I see the patients, uh, make appointments, schedule their appointments. So we go above and beyond for our patients. We actually schedule them appointments if they need referrals. So we'll um, set them appointments up, get them scheduled, and then get the results back and call them in to follow up on them. Yeah, we do labs here as well. So I'll draw your labs, send them out to lab core. We do COVID testing here. So I'll do that um, along with the flu and um, COVID vaccines. Well, that, 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 that is actually, you know, I, I, I've been at your facility on several occasions. And one of the things that I know just observing is that, that there's a great sense of unity, uh, meaning that the workers there get along. And uh, so Dr. Lindsay and Felicia, if you, if you both wanna speak on just, just the environment. I mean, it, it is so professional. Um, when you walk in, you, you're greeted with, with honor and, and respect. And, and, and that's major because sometimes you may go into a facility and the lack of professionalism it just can draw people away, but it's like anyone is smiling, anyone is just, it's just, it's just one big family, it seems. Um, uh, am, am I correct in my assessment? <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely right. <laughs> this is like a family environment. We get to know our patients and Dr. Lindsay actually go above and beyond because when she leaves here and mm -hmm. if a patient has a problem, she won't stop until she finds out or find a way to help the patient and get them on a good health path. Right. Now, Dr. Lindsay, uh, about a year ago, I guess when you first came on, uh, there was another doctor there, I think that was with you, uh, another nurse practitioner. That got, uh, is she still there or is, it, is she pretty much you now? Um, I respectfully, I... Okay, I got you, I got you, I got you. I got you. Okay, okay, no, no, no. We, we talked in the past about... Um, Establishing a dental a dental uh, practice in, in your facility is that that still uh, a goal of yours? Pardon me. Uh, a, a dental. Oh, absolutely. So, Dell Care Health Solution was strategically set up to be a comprehensive um, practice, um, mm -hmm. and so currently, um, as Felicia stated, we currently have in house lab where we do, we draw our patients' labs, right? How many times have we, have, you know, you been to your provider and you're unable to just find that, you know, 30 minutes, an hour and a half to get your labs done elsewhere, right? In the lab. And so we um, we have an in-house lab here, um, our patients get their labs done. As it relates to the dental clinic, yes, it is here. We are feverishly working on it and it will definitely be coming on stream. Um, 
-hmm. The goal, again, is to ensure that we are bringing in these individuals and we are providing comprehensive care, a wide array of services. You get your labs done, you get your teeth taken care of, um, you know, you get your psychiatric treatment done. We, 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 we are on a path to bring all that to, we want to make it absolutely comprehensive. We came here with um, the intent to, you know, provide comprehensive holistic care that is meaningful to each and every one. And we are on a path to do that. We are actually doing it in segments. So, mm -hmm. so, so absolutely 2023. Yes. The dental clinic will be open in 2023. Okay. Now let's go back to the last for a second. Um, if, if someone got a, a lab slip that's from LabCorp and they wanted to come in your facility and get the labs uh, drawn, uh, or would they be allowed to? Because because the script says lab core, but so so I just want to make it uh, you know known known to people that you know if they come in with a lab core slip, are they allowed to get their labs drawn, or does it have to be another type of our uh, lab lab prescription? So good question. The lab is designed for our patients. So um, okay, okay. <laughs> but but let me hasten to say this. so the lab is designed for our patients. But um, let me hasten to say this. If let's say I have a patient here um, who went to see the endocrinologist and the endocrinologist sent that patient to the lab, then that patient can always come here and get those labs drawn. Okay, okay. And Felicia, you mentioned earlier about uh, COVID testing. Um, so if someone walks in, uh, will they get the results in and there or will they have to wait a couple of days? How does that work? We do the rapid test here, and we also okay. do the PCR to send out one that goes, um, you'll get the results back within 48 hours to 72 hours. That's good. Yeah, that's and then good. Uh, rapids within 15 minutes. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> that, 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 that is awesome. Um, so, Dr. Lindsay, you know, prior to the show starting, I, I said to myself, here's Dr. Lindsay. She, she comes from, from Jamaica, and she's here in, in another part of the country, and she has her own practice. And she's and she's a, a woman of color, mm -hmm. um, and that, that's that's an amazing story. So I mean, have you ever just sat back and think, you know, how successful that that you are as a woman of color that that, that you you're building your own empire, you you're you're, you're building a medical facility, heart in the community in the city of Wilmington, which is very significant because sometimes people have got to go way down Kirkwood Highway, way down New York, or way down Stanton to to get medical care, but. It's right there in the city of Wilmington. So, I mean, do you ever just think, think back and, 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 talk, and just think about how successful that, that you are as a woman of color? Actually, um, let me, I honestly, I am humbled. Okay. Um, and for me, it is more of, um, I consider myself work in progress okay. and not so much a success. Um, my success is based on my community that I serve, the health of the people in the community. So, I mean, if my patients are doing well, then for me, that is success. You know, I, I see myself as a vessel um, and of the Supreme Being, and I just want to be here for the people of Wilmington and its surrounding areas, you know, to create that atmosphere for them where they feel welcome, where they're cared for, where they feel comfortable talking about their issues that are affecting them. So for me, that those things, those, those are my success milestones and not so much what I have created here. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's good. That's good. You know, and I, and I look on your website, Felicia, and I see that Dell, Dell Care Health Solutions does a lot of community outreach. I mean, I, I've seen you guys out in, in, in different events, and that's very significant because it's, it's kind of sort of like, like church service here where, 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 you know, you, you can preach in, in the church, but you, you got to go out to the people. And this is what Dell Care does. It goes out to the, to, to the people. So for those who are watching, uh, what are some of the uh, community events that that you've been involved with, Dell Care has been involved with? We have been involved in a few. Uh, I've been to Delaware Park. I've been to some of the uh, middle schools. I went to AI high, uh, Middle School. I've been to Kingswood out, um, is it Kingswood Community Center? Yes. And I've been to the um, Taste of Africa event that they had in Wilmington. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, we were there. There were um, with 
So we, I'm going to jump in and just kind of, um, okay, sure. uh, she knows I like to talk. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we, we partner with Lifestyle Matter. That is a community yes. outreach program okay. um, to, I think originally they were, the, the goal was to, uh, and I mean, touch the communities, the marginalized communities that have been affected by COVID, but it has uh, pretty much um, uh, transitioned to more of a wellness um, venture. And so we have partnered with those individuals and we have done a number of, and Felicia has championed this. She has done a number of COVID um vaccine clinics um, over in Newport um, at this particular yeah. church. I can't think of the name of the church right now. She's gone to a number of community, number of community events. We have gone as far as Farrah Run, yeah. right? Yeah. Along with yeah. Lifestyle yeah. Matter. Um, again, the goal is we are a community practice. Right. And the goal is to ensure that we are connecting with these individuals. And so Felicia has been instrumental in getting out there and, and you know, just and, and pushing, you know, Dell care to the forefront, you know, letting these people know that look, we are here, we want to serve you, you know, we we pride in in, in serving, right? Because they matter, right? Our slogan mm -hmm. is um we provide what what we uh, what is what sort of slogan again for Felicia? Dell care health solutions, your care. Your care is our priority. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the patient care is our priority. So yes, we are doing a number of events. And we will continue to do the, these events um, until, you know, until. Right, right. So, so I'm going to go back to, to, to high school. So when, when, when you're going to the high schools, what, what exactly are, are you presenting to, to high school students? I think that's an excellent idea because you want to get to them while they're early. So, I mean, is there like health risk that, that, that you educate the high school schoolers with? Um, we promote physicals to okay. the high school, the middle schools. Okay, got you. Yeah, and um, we do let them know that we are a primary care. We do walk-ins, and if they ever need care, they can come to us. Right, because I'm just thinking. We have a sliding scale yeah. fee, too. For those. Oh, okay. Yeah. Th that, that is awesome, because, you know. Yeah, school, very right? discounted, actually. Yes. Very discounted. <laughs> very. <laughs> for physical, <laughs> for, our, for our, our, our children, high school children. Yeah, because a lot of them play sports and they, and they need that physical. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. just thinking. So, I mean, it, 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 that, that is excellent, um, Dr. Lindsay. I want to talk about some some health risks just for a moment. Um, there are a couple of clients that that I work with, and I work in a mental health facility. And let me give you scenarios. Uh, and there was one particular client who was diagnosed with what a form of cancer. I can't remember what type of form of cancer that he's been diagnosed with. Mm -hmm. And he smokes. <laughs> And I and I would redirect him on the importance of not smoking and you have cancer. And, and he acknowledges that it's the issue with him smoking but having cancer, but they continue to do so, continue to do so, continue to do so. So for those who have been diagnosed with, with any form of cancer, maybe especially lung cancer, and they continue to smoke, uh, what, what are some of the health risks that are involved? We want to get a little education on that. So um, quite interesting. Um, so for smoking, let us take smoking. I, I will take it and I will just kind of um, utilize, uh, I'll, I'll, let me just give an analogy of how smoking affects um, right. us as individuals. Yeah. So if you smoke, when you smoke, what is happening is that that smoke is actually going back into your system. It is going back into your cardiac system, right? And so it it becomes it becomes more of a um, Hadesian type issue in your in your in your blood vessels. Now, when this happens, what you begin to experience is narrowing of those vessels, right? Mm -hmm. And so if you think about how small some of those vessels are, if you internalize issues, when you internalize that smoke and it becomes a problem, it is harder for the blood to move through it, right? And so whether you're thinking of somebody who, a, a, a male 
who is who's having issues of erectile dysfunction, pretty much the same thing. It's not moving up. The, the blood is not, blood flow is not really not moving, right? Because the smoke is, ca is causing hardening of the arteries and the veins, as well as narrowing. Now you talk about diabetes, it's pretty much the same concept, right? The consistency of the blood ch changes. And so now it becomes more difficult to move through, right? Then because it's, it's, it's difficult to go through these areas, you find that the blood pressure start rising because now the heart has to work much harder to pump it, right? And if you're talking about a cancer patients, their immune system are absolutely compromised. So when you come, when you combine all that, the problems that smoking can cause in a patient like a cancer patient, it can, it's 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 own it can be only detrimental to the. I mean, even more detrimental to um comp just complicate the fact that that individual already has cancer. Right. Mm -hmm. So therefore, um, it is it, we understand that individuals have smoked probably their entire lives and and habits are easy to make and hard to break. And so we want to tread carefully and be patient with those individuals because we don't want to take, take you out of your comfort zone. Right. But mm -hmm. we want to encourage them a little. Try to do it little by little. I work with my patients. We'll do it gradually, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Because sometimes if they go cold turkey, they'll have problems. But how we do it? How about we do it gradually? One of the things about providing holistic care is understanding that individual and knowing that what works for one doesn't necessarily work for all. So while someone can stop cold turkey and be okay, the other person might not be able to, but it's each for that provider to work with each and every one of those individuals based on their individual need to try to encourage them and work with them to try to quit smoking. Mm -hmm. we, know, we know if you've smoked for 20 years, we know it's, it might take a while for you to really kick the habit, right? And so the more practical we are in dealing with those individuals, the more successful we might be. Yeah, and you know, and then there are those who say, you know, I tried to patch, uh, I tried to gum, <laughs> it worked for a little bit, <laughs> then I'm, that was it, you know? So, I mean, and you also give them the, the, the smoking hotline, but you know, so that's another alternative to help, you know, prevent them from, from, from smoking. But what you mentioned on um, <clears throat> diabetes, another case, uh, uh, there was someone that I was working with, wouldn't monitor the sugars, when they're taking their medications uh, for the diabetes, what are the health risks involved with not checking your sugars and not taking your your, your medications or uh, I guess an insulin? If you have what was it, type one, type two? Like I can't remember the difference between the two, but that can be pretty dangerous, right? Okay, so it, it, I'm just gonna pivot back to my statement that I just made. Uh -huh. When you have issues like diabetes. It, the consistency of the blood, it changes. It, it's not the same, mm -hmm. right? So, and an analogy that I like to use, and I use it with my patients a lot. If you get a cup of water and a cup of water with sugar and you put it in the windowsill and you let it sit for three months, when you return, what you will find is that the water in the windowsill still remain water because if you put your finger in that water, it will still be water. However, the one with sugar, the consistency will definitely change, right? If you put your finger and you do this, it's gonna become sticky. So for the individual that have diabetes, Think about your blood as being the one that has the, 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 the that water that has the solvent in it, right? The solute in it. Now, um, so your blood consistency is no longer the same, right? As you, as that blood is passing through the, the, the blood vessels, it starts sticking. Just think about it, right? It's not moving. And so it causes problem with the kidneys and the, just the blood pressure and the kidneys and, all, and a kaleidoscope of events that can, you know, just literally, I mean, take you down that, that rabbit hole um, that you really don't want to go with your health. So it is really important for the individuals with diabetes 
to try to control your diabetes. Keep your numbers nice and tight, exercise, eat right. For those people that have diabetes type two, it is reversible. You can reverse it, right? Exercise, count your carbohydrates, ensure that you know you are doing you're taking your medications for those of those on medications ensuring that you're adhering to the guidelines of your treatment regimen um you can be successful at it for those with diabetes type 1 we understand that the pathophysiology is a little different whereas they have sometimes have total destruction of the pancreatic cells and so they don't secrete insulin at all they have to take medication but with a good exercise regimen that we, I mean, anyone can absolutely control their diabetes. So I would implore everyone out there, if you are diabetic, um, just adhere to your regiment guidelines. And, and, and we do understand, again, we are practical people. We understand that sometimes it's not easy. Um, you know, people are on the go. People are, um, I, I had a patient and he was supposed to be taking his medicines, his insulin, because he's that he has diabetes type one. Like three that. times a day, but he has to work. It's not convenient. And so for those patients, what we do, we try to work out a regimen with them. Okay, let us sit and let us work it out. Let us see how best we can arrange your medication, you know, your medication times so you can have the amount of insulin that you are really supposed to have in order to control your diabetes. But it is imp imperative that diabetic patients control diabetes because it can only become problematic if it's not controlled. Okay. Alicia, so a um, patient comes in, <laughs> wants to know what type of insurance did you accept? Is, is it all forms of insurance or the insurance that you don't accept? Let's, let's just clarify and make sure we, <laughs> we, we got take things together. Insurances. We take Medicaid, Medicare, mm -hmm. uh, we take Aetna, we take Cigna. So we're in... Um, any Medicaid or any insurance that's in Delaware, even if it's out of state, as long as it's not that state Medicaid, we will take it. Okay, so let me ask a follow-up question <laughs> because there are a good number of people who don't even have insurance. So if, if they was walk in the office and say, I don't have any insurance, uh, is there a sliding fee scale? I know you mentioned that earlier. Just, just, wanna, yes. just for clarification for those who are watching. Yes, there you are. We have a sliding scale fee for them. And it's based on the national poverty guideline. Yeah. Okay, that's good. So, so when someone walks in the door, they won't be denied service. Right? <laughs> that is a policy here. No one goes without care. We will work something out. The goal Excellent. is to provide care to each and every individual, so no one gets turned away. We right. will find a way out. All right. So December the tenth is just a couple of days away. Just two days away. December the tenth, two thousand twenty-two. Dental Care and Health Solutions got some big major event going on that day. Um, anybody want to talk about it? What's going to take place that day? What are the hours? <laughs> the hours is going to be from 10 to 2. We are going to have vendors, free food, free giveaways, and we're going to have free screen, um, screen in there. The We open up at 8 to 2. So um, if someone do needs to be seen, we can see you as well. The, the event's not going to stop it. <laughs> so... <laughs> Let's look at the screenings. Is, is it physical health screenings? Is it eye screenings? Is it nose screenings? Is it all of the above? Or let's let's get into what's all of the above. Oh, okay. Oh, so, so that, that, that that is excellent. I mean, that is so so excellent. It gives you the opportunity. And once again, it goes back to community outreach where um, people who may not have a primary care physician can come. I know. What is the address once again? Twenty eight hundred one Lancaster Avenue, and it's Suite E. We're in Westside Plaza. So if they're familiar with Lancaster Avenue, we're next to the um, Brandywine Counseling and we have a gym next door to us as well. Okay. Pretty awesome. close to the Congo Funeral Home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll that down bar. Okay, right across the street. So, yes, but as a part of our ongoing effort to create awareness of our presence, because we find that people still don't know we're here. They say, what are you doing there, right? Oh, right and right. so we want to share you know, our beautiful atmosphere with our wonderful warm staff that we, you know, we, we, we go over and beyond um, to ensure that we're providing that quality evidence-based care that is meaningful to everyone. So in an, in the effort, in an effort to create awareness of our presence, um, we are having the opening on Saturday. Mm -hmm. We start 
uh, with 10 to 2, Miss Felicia. Mm -hmm. um, we will be having vendors. We have um, pivot physical therapy. We will have the breast cancer, um, Delaware Breast Cancer Coalition. We have um, Dr. Kevin Murray Chiropractic Services. We have the Spine Center. We have YM YWCA, the Ellen Graham Cancer Center will be here. Um, I'm missing something. And we have Pyromed here as well. So it's going to be a pretty, you know, Excellent. Um, yeah, lots of information, um, uh, information packed, so to speak, uh, you know, and like I said, awareness driven of the services that each of these individuals offer and you know how you can absolutely take um, advantage of you know whether it's chiropractic services um physical therapy services um the cancer center um that is pretty important because we know um our rate of cancer we have a pretty high rate of cancer in Delaware so all right we want to um help to create awareness of that so definitely definitely now now what what are the, the normal working hours it is just this for information Mondays and Thursdays were open from eight to seven. Tuesdays and Wednesdays were open from eight to five. Fridays were open from eight to two and Saturday, I mean, eight to four and Saturday was eight to two. All right. Uh, Dr. Lindsay, what, what, what causes stroke? Well, let me just put for, sim just to simplify it. Um, blood pressure too high, blood pressure too low. Uncontrolled blood pressure. Um, if your blood pressure is too high, think about it. It exerts pressure on those blood vessels, right? Um, if it's too low, we are in trouble as well. So just to simplify it, if your blood pressure is too high, get it under control. If your blood pressure is too low, ensure you're fixing it. Mm -hmm. It needs to be fixed. All right. You know, Liz, you know a couple of days ago when I, I, this question came to mind, I wanted to ask you, you know, because culture plays a big deal in terms of medical uh, medical issues and concerns. And, and there are those potentially from, for, for culture reasons may refuse to take the medication. They may decide to take herbs or, or anything else. Um, so as a primary care physician, um, what, what is your take on those who say, look, Dr. Lizzie. I'm a family nurse I'm practitioner. Okay, I'm a primary practice. care provider. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I love I my love nurse it. practitioner matter. So <laughs> okay. let, let's hey, keep that nurse practitioner matter. I, I like it better. Okay. okay that's good. Okay. I'm but, sorry. But, hey, sorry but, to interrupt you. Okay, that's good. Well, you, you, got, you got so much intelligence. You know, you're, you're, you're like a medical doctor. But nevertheless, um, have, have people come to you? Have you ever had situations where people say, "Look, I refuse medications. I, I don't believe in them, and I may take a herb, but I just may not take medication at all." I do. Good question. Great question. I love that question because, so let me say this. In providing care, uh, let me back up. America is a melting pot. We have people from every walks of life living here. Right. right? Um, it is very, it is imperative that we foster cultural practices and beliefs as healthcare providers. Again, let me repeat, it is imperative that healthcare providers foster cultural, ethical, religious beliefs, right? We want to ensure that we are able to provide care to those individuals that are different from us with dignity, respect in a meaningful way, ensuring that the care is effective. Now, for those individuals who, who are accustomed to their herbal medications, what I do, I sit, I research the medicines. Um, as I'm talking to you now, I have like four people that I need to research herbal um, substance for. Okay. They'll say to me, I take this. I said, okay, I don't know this, but I will look it up, right? And in some instances I say, okay, here's what we'll do. We'll take it so many hours before your medication, right? So we're not taking them together. 
I think it is important to find, so I find myself looking at medication, um, sub, um, uh, herbal substance all the time, because it is important that we meet each patient where they are. Okay? As healthcare providers, we shouldn't tower over. I don't tower over my patients. I don't do that. What I do, I try to find a middle, a safe middle ground. And I will bend backwards to work with my patients as long as it will not jeopardize their safety. If it won't jeopardize their safety, I will go home and I will sit and I will go to bed at three to try to figure it out. Because again, my success, my patient's success is my success. If my patient feels better, if my patient eats better, right? And they're, I mean, when they come into me, they're feeling better, they look better. That is my success. That is how I measure my success, right? So it is, I, I, and I implore every provider, we should all be striving right, um, to become proficient at understanding cultures that are different than those that we practice, you know, cultural practices. We're all striving, um, you know, we should all strive to understand each individual and ensure that we're providing quality care, care that is meaningful, you know, care, I mean, empathetic care, you know, um, to each individual I mean, amidst, you know, the differences in terms of cultural or religious practices, it is imperative that we do that. I've had patients, I, I remember when I was inpatient, I said to this gentleman, I, I don't know if I'm, am I, can I look at your face when you're speaking to me, sir, because I know his religious practice was different than mine. Oh, okay. You know, and I said, well, I, I don't know if it's okay to look at you. And he said, yes. I said, okay, fine. You know, um, so you know, while we on and, and and we must also understand that we are living in times when there's an array of things that are coming out for the same reason we have like we have new medications cutting edge coming out every day and it's the same for the herbal market right and so it's it's it's, it's competitive people want to try things but it's a matter of educating them you know, and, and, and my mission here, the mission here at Delcare is to educate our patients, keep them informed. It is, it is important to keep your patient informed. It, and, and when the patients are, when they know that you really want to work with them, they, they, it, they will open up to you. They will trust you. They will talk to you. And as a result of that, you're, I'm able to provide that meaningful care. I meet them halfway. And so, you know, I implore, and like I said, every provider, let us get out there. Let us begin to meet these patients halfway, you know, um, because I tell you what, I find that when I work with my patients through challenges of not wanting to adhere to their medication because they want to take herbal, I find that when I work with them, the more I work with them, mm -hmm. the more they're apt to uh, adhere to their medication regimen. But if you just like ignore them and try to brush them off and tell them, one of the things about my practice, I don't tell my patients. We call it, it is a collaborative effort. It is a partnership. We partner. So when I tell my patient, I am going to put you on this medication. This is how it works. This is why I think it is the best medication for you. What do you think? I said, what are your thoughts? Okay. Yeah. So, so while I tell them, don't go to Google and binge because it will drive you crazy because that is not evidence-based practice. You know, I, I, I get their feedback. So it is a shared decision. We have shared decision. Dell care is we treat people. It's shared decision making. I want to know what your thoughts are. I want to meet you where you are, because like I said, when you feel better, your success, that's your success. And that's my success. Okay, that's all. You, you develop a trusting relationship with, with them and you show them that they care. And that, that makes a that makes a, a big difference, a, a huge difference. So just for clarification, do, do, do you serve adults and children or just primarily adults? Yes, we see.
we see adults, we see six months. Well, I've seen four months too. Yeah. <laughs> the goal was to see six months and up, but I, I do see, I, I see, I've seen a three, I think four months old or three months old. Um, but yes, we see, uh, we're fa I'm a family nurse practitioner. Okay. So I see, uh, I do the entire family. So okay. in, 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 in grad school, we say we do from the womb to the tomb you know kind awesome, of awesome, awesome. <laughs> so we see everybody and a, and a large percent quite a, a, a decent percent uh percentage of my population are children and i also oh, okay. have a very um strong geriatric uh percentage of my patients are geriatric as well uh, so. that, that, that is awesome that, that is all you know you know you know what was, was very sad is when you got a child <laughs> and you have to get that child a needle and that child's crying <laughs> they i mean I, I seen that one day at another practice i said oh man that's man I, and that is so sad, but so, but nevertheless, you, you mentioned you mentioned school. There are those who may be watching, or who may be looking for an internship. Uh, do, you, do you have college students or those who are going for like like Felicia to the medical assistants, or you know, there are opportunities for for them to intern there? Good question. Um, but let me can I say something about the baby first? Oh, sure, oh, sure. <laughs> so oh, sure. let me tell let me tell everyone out there, um, all the viewers, that we are. We are literally child friendly. We're a child friendly environment. We have we have children. When they come here, they love it here. They have fun. <laughs> we are a kid friendly. Uh, we are a kid friendly, absolute kid friendly practice. Our children just love it here. Okay. Um, we feed them, we give them water, you know, we take care of them when they come here. I've never had children come here and don't want to come back. They love it here. Um just today I had a yesterday I had an eight-month-old. Yeah. And he was just loving it. He was just oh, so, um, so yes, we do. We are we are we are children friendly here. Um, so for those individuals out there, you're struggling to find that provider, or your kid is having an episodic problem, and you need to get them somewhere. We are a very child friendly yeah. practice. Okay, but in turn, good question, and and I and and ooh, I love that question. So okay. yes, yes, um, we do. We are an uh, absolute learning practice. Um, there were a lot, quite a few individuals who um, mentored me um, to where I am today and continue to. Um, and so one of the things that I, I promised for the, the wonderful uh, mentors and educators that I had along the way, I decided that I would give back. Right. Yeah. I would give back to I will give back to the upcoming students. And as a result of that, when um, Dell Care Health Solutions was created, um, the consensus was that we will be a teaching, absolute teaching practice. Now, when saying that, I see every patient that comes in the door, unless they come for a nurse visit, and Felicia. Or, or my other medical assistant will take care of them. Okay. Now, if they come, I, I eyeball every patient that walk in here, but I also have quite a few students come in here. Um, currently, I have about four, an estimated four or five doctoral students who are doing their project right out of this um, practice here. That's and awesome. I'm taking on, yes, thank you. And I'm taking on a new student come January. We service the universities around the area, Wilmington U, Newman University coming on board in um, the spring, in the fall, is it fall, in the fall? What's, what semester is coming? The spring, the spring. Um, and we, and uh, we, have, we have Wilmington U students here. We have Widener University students here, uh, students from Walden um, here they they love the experience here my patients love and adore them um they are abs we have a student from jefferson currently here um and it's interesting my we, we joke about it my my students always try to stay for two semesters <laughs> they never try they're never leaving after one semester they try to hang on for a second semester so um any given semester currently uh th i think this past semester that ju just ended earlier this week um i had maybe five total of five master students nurse practitioner students and about four or five doctoral students 
Wow. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> and coming on stream next semester, we will be having medical assistant students. So, so, so. Now, uh, listen, you, 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 you have a, a university there. That's a university. Yes, yes, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. My, my medical assistants are phenomenal. They are absolutely great. Um, Felicia is just absolutely tremendous. I mean, she is fabulous. She um, connects with those patients. Um, you know, she provides quality care. Um, she connects with the kids. Um, and my other medical assistants, Ms. Patricia, she is fantastic. She worked with children for a number of years. So she has become a child expert. And, you know, it's a pleasure having her here. And so um, ABS, we decided that we want to impart our knowledge and skills onto the upcoming, um, uh, you know, students, whether it's yeah. medical assistant, um, nurse practitioners, or at the doctoral level. We want to ensure that we are teaching the next generation, you know, because um, we need help. The community needs help. Just last night, I had a conversation with a professor from an area university, and she was saying, I need community help for my students, um, mm -hmm. for my my R and my, my registered nursing students, my, you know, my baccalaureate students. And I said, okay, sure, I, I'll open my door to you as well, you know, because I know they can, there is some, there's something to learn. And as we know, know that the, the healthcare is the biggest, probably the biggest profession in the world, right? But we know we have we've been having challenges in terms of staffing everywhere. And COVID highlighted how important it is um, for us to have enough staffing in place. And so Delcare is committed to make our contribution to improving um, you know, the, the workforce, so to speak, um, the professional force of healthcare, because the goal is to is to champion, is to ensure that we are building healthier communities, you know, and healthier states and, you know, and, and, and to the national level. Yeah, that's not at all. You know, you mentioned staff. I got, I got two of you here representing this great organization. So I didn't know if you ladies want to take a little time, if you want to have acknowledgement or shout out to, to any of your staff members. Who uh, sort of community know who they are? It's, it's up to you, you know, because it's such an awesome organization. I just wanted to give you a fair play of just mentioning some of the other, other staff members who are there to make Dell Care so great. Our office manager, Angela. Yeah, right. absolutely. Uh, <laughs> yes, since they get to put up with me, um, <laughs> let me do it. Um, so, a wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> they get to put up with me, Mr. Rashida, out every day, you know. Um, yes, and they're 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 fantastic. Um, they're they're reliable. Um, so let me start with our office manager, Angela, who has been here since the inception of this practice. Oh, she yes. is a phenomenal person. She's like a little walking computer. Um, sometimes I feel bad for her because we pull her in all directions and I don't know how mm -hmm. she survived in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, she's like a literal walking computer. <laughs> like Angela, Miss Angela, you know, we pull her in all directions. She's phenomenal. She's a people's person. She connects yes, with yes. patients. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, you know, she she ensures to the day to day running of the business. And I just want to say, Angela, we appreciate you wherever you are. We hope you're watching. Yes. Um, she couldn't be here tonight because she had other responsibilities and she's yep. been instrumental in um, the the, the upcoming event that we're having this weekend. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we 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 salute you, Miss Angela. We thank you. Um, Miss Patricia is not here. She's our newest member of staff, but she is absolutely phenomenal. She gets her work done. Um, she's very pleasant. I mean, she's good. Like I said, she's been doing it for years. And so, um, you know, uh, expert with children. Um, we're a child-friendly facility. Come up, Coming up next year, we're going to be doing our children's vaccine, and we're looking forward to servicing the community as well. And Felicia here, phenomenal. She connects with our patients. You know, we take care of their every need. 
checking in on our patients, you know, organizing things, making sure the day to day running of the business, um, you know, uh, stays intact. And, and like I, I just want to say thanks so much. We have a biller who uh, we don't see frequently, but I just want to give a shout out to Miss Levy. Um, she is <laughs> instrumental, um, you know, in, in ensuring that we communicate and because the business the overheads need to get paid or the doors will not be open. So, um, you know, we are grateful. We have an accountant who is just Mr. Tregby. He's just absolutely, you know, um, fabulous. Um, staff can call him with their every need. You know, um, he keeps us all on our toes and we are very grateful. We are just absolutely grateful for all the friends and fam, you know, friends of and family of Dell Care. See, once a patient comes into the practice, you know, they become a Del part of the Dell Care family. Right, right. And so we just want to say hello out there to all the Dell Care family. Um, you know, we we love you. We we just want to be here for you. And um, we just want to take care of your needs. So um, did I miss anybody, Ms. Felicia? I hope yeah. not. Um, I think I, I kind of highlighted. We I just want to say thanks yeah. to the support. I mean, um, the families who support us. Um to keep these doors open, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Miss Felicia, Felicia works tirelessly um, in the business. So is Angela. They just, I, Angela and I are texting at three in the morning. You know, I text oh, her at 12 before I go to bed and she's <laughs> back at three. And I'm like, three, you know, like three in the morning, hey. right? <laughs> well, you, you know, 24 hours a day, that's 24 hours. <laughs> no, right. stop. Right. Well, yeah, before I go to bed, um, you know, Mr. Rashid, I'll text her, I'll say, but my intent is for her to see it in the morning, but she responds at 3 a.m. in the morning. That, that is awesome. And so I say thanks to the families who allow us to, um, you know, be out here, um, you know, doing the work of the people. I have a friend that said to me, he said, I will support you because you're doing the work of the people. You know, uh, he says, what you're doing is higher than you, you know, so I will support you. And so we have friends who have been tremendous in helping us keep these doors open, um, you know, and keep providing care to our wonderful people of Wilmington and its surrounding areas. Like I said, to all of you out there, we salute you, we appreciate you, we love you. All right, so in closing, I will give uh, you two ladies opportunity to say any final words. Um, we start off with um, Melissa, you have any closing comments that you wanna to say to the people who are watching? I would like to say, you guys, I hope to see you on Saturday. And I thank you for all your support, your love and dedication to our practice. And I hope to see more of you coming into the practice because we would love to have you be a part of our Dell Care family. Awesome. Okay, Dr. Leslie, close us up. <laughs> so Dell Care is a nurse practitioner owned um, practice that provides care for episodic care, acute care. Um, we take care of chronic issues. Um, we do preventative care. We do men's health, women's health. We do home visits. We have telehealth services, right? And so we have, we have all these platforms in which to connect with our patients. We have a wonderful location here at 2801 uh, Lancaster Avenue, Suite E, Wilmington, 19805. You can reach us at 302-467-1778. We are on, we can, um, our, web, our um, website, delcarehealth.com. You can connect with us on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. We are available to you 24 hours a day. We have a wonderful portal. If you are out there and you are hearing us and you want to connect with us, go to dellcarehealth.com. Send us a message and Felicia will respond to you. And we try to respond within 24 hours. We normally do. Okay. Um, give us a call in our office tomorrow. Let us provide you with meaningful service. We provide, we provide effective, efficient, patient-centered 
care in a timely manner that is meaningful to each individual. We provide that listening ear that you have longed for. So whatever the services that you need, let us know. Okay, we have vaccines, we do, we do COVID testing, we do flu vaccines, we have um, COVID vaccines, you name it, we will source it. We, if we don't have it here, we'll figure it out for you. Okay, uh, we have wonderful people on staff who are here to serve you. Um, our goal, again, is to ensure that we're building healthier communities, is to ensure that our people are doing well, right? Because if you are doing well, health, Dr. G, my friend Dr. G said health is well, okay? Mm -hmm. um, we understand that you are might be out there and your experience with your former provider might, you know, might, might have disappointed you but give us an opportunity to meet with you. Let us talk. Let us, let us have a dialogue. I always say to my staff, let us have that dialogue. If you, if you have health questions and you feel like you're not getting them answered, give us a call. Let us talk about what the issues that you're having. Let us find some common ground, right? To what is going on with you. Again, because at Dell Care, your health, is our priority. Right. And what's the phone number there, Dr. Nunzi? Alicia. 302-467-1778. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget this Saturday from 10 to 12, 2801 Lancaster Avenue. It's going to be a great event. Come right, on out. Ahead. We have food. We have goodies. We have wonderful people. Mm -hmm. You'll get to me. You'll get to meet at least one of my doctoral students. So if you have questions on health, mental health, that's her specialty. She wants to connect with you out there. Um, uh, we have, again, I, I talked about the Cancer Society. We have people here who can provide you with really good information. So for women out there who... Um, are unsure of, you know, you in terms of your breast cancer screening, come on out. We have someone for you. And if you're looking for physical therapy, come on out. We have someone for you too. So come on out on Saturday. Come on mm -hmm. to 2801 Lancaster Avenue. We are in Sweet E. You will see us. We have the beautiful sign right outside. Now I'm being a little conceited here. <laughs> we have the beautiful sign right outside. You can't miss us. Come on down, meet our staff. Let us have, again, that dialogue. We just want to make you well. We want to make you whole. All right, ladies. Thank you for being the guest this evening. It was a wonderful program. Um, and I'll be stopping by on Saturday as well. And, um, so for those who are watching, please like, subscribe, and share. God bless. And have a safe week. Thank you for having Thanks. us, Mr. Rashida. We appreciate well, you. Anytime. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Take care, ladies. You too. Bye.